Hi, and welcome back to the Christian Minute podcast. My name is Anne Markey, and I'm the host of this podcast. I'm also a Christian speaker and author, and I am so happy today to be here with Natasha. How are you? Uh, fine, uh, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Before we jump into our topic today, why don't you tell us just a little bit more about yourself and your background? Okay, thank you. Well, I'm from South Africa, and I'm currently sitting in South Africa. <laughs> so I'm a, a wife. We are married for 20 years. I've got two kids, teenagers. Um, I've been a counselor for uh, over a decade now. Uh, I'm actually a pastoral counselor. Um, I work with teenagers and families. Families is my passion, and teenagers uh, specifically, helping parents navigate that rough years through teenage years. Um, I'm not sure if you want to hear how my journey started, because actually God took me on this specific journey. That wasn't my initial um, idea of doing what I'm doing now today, what I'm busy with. I had something else in mind. Do you want me to share that? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so I actually, <laughs> originally I studied BCom, so I worked the corporate environment, and then uh, when we, my husband and I started, uh, we're going to start a family, uh, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and that's my, because I love being family, family is most important. Anyway, so my husband said, now I know you, you're not going to just sit here and do nothing, <laughs> what do you want to do? So I said, can I study again? And then I jumped into the journey of psychology. And I studied psychology with the idea to go and study clinical psychology. And um, in my practice years where I needed to do practical um, counseling time, I actually started counseling in an unplanned pregnancy counseling center. And that's okay. when my journey changed. <laughs> it's a Christian counseling center. And I worked with young teenagers as young as 12. Uh, 20, 12 to 21 year old that's facing unplanned pregnancy. And I realized as I was working with this young teenagers that the parents doesn't know what the teenagers are going through and the teenagers doesn't understand what they are going through. And uh, I completed my studies but go all the way to clinical because I realized that God has called me to, to serve families in a unique way and clinical is not that way. So mm. at this point, I have my own practice here in South Africa. I serve families and um, work with teenagers. I go and do public speaking. I go and give sex ed on a Christian basis <laughs> to young 12-year-olds. I go on and invited to schools and go and present there uh, and ask them, at, teach them for a whole day about God's principles and values of marriage and where babies come from. And then I also have my programs that I developed for parents to understand today's teenager with all the challenges of the world it's what they are facing with perfect yeah and that's i forgot to say what we're talking about but that's exactly that this idea of you know how to raise godly teenagers in this age and for me this is perfect and this is why i was actually so interested in this is because my daughter my oldest is 13 so just kind of entering that those teenage years mm -hmm. and i know that a lot of parents are actually quite anxious about the teenagers we know like the teenage years we know they can be rough and so hopefully today in our conversations we can encourage parents but also just feel ready and not as scared Yes, yes. I believe the teenage years is for me the funnest year, uh, but it can be fun or it can be uh, almost hell for some parents. The parents I work with <laughs> are really struggling. And well, when we help each other as community in Christ, I think we can do a better job and we all should enjoy our, our teenagers. And it's actually fun teaching them God's principles. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. Can you maybe share with us some key biblical principles maybe that we can use to help us as we raise teenagers? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so let's talk about principles. I love teaching on principles and a specific, specifically God's principles, the biblical principles. Now, I remember growing up and uh, people referred to biblical principles and it sounds so holy and so, oh, I'm scared of that. <laughs> you know, it sounds very religious uh, in that sense. And I investigate principles and how to explain these biblical principles to our kids in today's age. And I looked at Jesus. How did Jesus explain things? He explained it in stories and parables, okay? 
Yeah. Um, so if you allow, I will going to explain how I would do a typical teenager. I had a teenager yesterday on Zoom. Uh, he was in the US and he was considering following Jesus. So I was so excited to talk to him. It was quite a privilege. And I'm going to explain it to you how I explain it to him. All right, the godly biblical principles and how we can use it as parents to explain it to our kids because this is how I do with my kids as well. All right, so we want to tell it so that they can understand. All right, so principles is actually um, scientific, it's a principle like a law. Uh, a principle I like to explain with the law of gravity. So, law and principle is the same thing. So, if we think about the law of gravity, okay. It's gravity is always on. We don't worry if gravity is on or not. So if I climb on the on the roof of the house and say I don't believe in gravity and I jump, will I fly? Mm -hmm. Obviously yeah. not. <laughs> Wait a pause and let our teenager answer. Okay, and say no. Obviously I won't fly. Okay. So gravity is on. Even it is, it's not based on my faith or not. It's on. Okay. So the principle of God applies in life. Why? Because he is the creator of the universe. And he has shown his principles in his creation for us and definitely in his Bible. I mean, I always tell the kids, the Bible is the instruction manual to life. If you want to know how to do life without falling and breaking your neck by jumping off the roof, read the Bible. And I love what you do and because you – all about Bible study, and that's a part where we need to understand the Bible and read the Bible, the instruction manual to life. Okay, now if we understand the instruction manual, we don't jump from roofs. If you jump, you're going to fall. But this is the thing God's principles show up in all areas in life, all right. And then the people think they're clever, they found a new secret or something, they did not. The creator actually already created that, and we can see it in life. So Let's look at biblical principles based on if we make it in a comparison with the law of gravity. Gravity is always on. That means if we are on the roof, we know what to do because we need to hold on and focus where we are or we can fall down. Okay? The principle applies in all areas of life. If you are in a tree, if you are on a wall, wherever, we're not scared of gravity because we know what gravity does. If you're going to jump or if you're going to trip, you're going to fall. Now, God gave us principles in the Bible, and there's a lot, and we can start discussing some of them and specific to um, teaching to our kids about peer pressure and stuff. We can teach them biblical principles to see that if they apply the principle correctly, and when we understand the principle, what happens if we understand gravity? We can make yeah. an airplane fly. So right. if we apply God's principles, your marriage can soar. Your years can be so much fun okay because we apply the principles and life is easier because we're not afraid of god's word we just apply it because we understand the principles and i think that's a way it makes the teenagers exciting because excited now see i can apply this in everyday life all right yeah. in everyday life we can apply god's principles it's not just when we go to church or when we try to be religious or see that this is a sin, you know, it's yeah. all about principle. And I love that uh, point of view to teach that to our kids. Yeah. And I, I love that you gave that example of gravity because that's exactly like you said, gravity is always there. And regardless of what we do, everything in our lives has to like gravity trumps what we do, right? Without thinking about it, we don't have to add to it. And it's the same about God, how, you know, we don't have to explain him. He's not in just certain scenarios, but he's everything. And I think about that verse about like, he holds all things together. So in everything we do, he is. Um, and that means that, yeah, we can apply, we can apply God's word to our life and say, Hey, this guy created the machine and he's telling us how to make it run at the highest potential. Maybe we should listen. <laughs> Yes, yes. And the thing is, God is such a good, loving father, okay? Now, this is where we need to take the principle uh, 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 understanding a little bit further because God is a good father. Now, if he's a good dad, he comes and tells us, be careful, you're going to fall, all right? 
And all our spirits, uh, having had taught or having taught us at the moment, you go and stand at the jungle gym standing when they're a little toddler, you know, two years old, to make sure they don't fall, all right? Now, as they grow older, they understand gravity, all right? They need to understand that they will fall if they climb up there. But God is coming and telling us in his word, in his laws, in his principles, in his word, that you're going to fall. Hmm. And then what we do is we fall because we don't apply his principles. And then we say, why is God so evil? What's he hmm. evil? Why didn't he intervene? He actually in and warned us about gravity. Then we have the consequences of gravity. We break our leg, and now it's God's fault. <laughs> yeah. And can you see how we can talk to our kids to say, listen, he's a good dad. Listen to his principles. It applies, and he wants us to keep us safe because he is loving. And then most of, not always, but most of the times the kids I work with make choices that defy gravity in their lives, and they hurt him. They're truly hurting. Their legs are broken, all right? Their minds, they, their hearts are broken. But they didn't apply God's law, all right, that God gave us to keep us safe. He's a good dad. So I think if we explain that to our kids rather than just say, oh, if you're going to sleep with somebody before you get married, you're going to hell. I mean, how is that helping our kids? It might be true or not. <laughs> it is true. But the thing is, God didn't come to condemn us. He came with grace and in truth. Jesus came. Mm. So he's telling us the truth about the principles, how he created the, word, uh, the world, but he also come with grace. But sometimes we only teach grace or only just truth. Okay, we need both. Because <laughs> Jesus came to complete the law. And I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so you've given us a broad framework about principles and how to kind of like talk about the concept of principles with our teenagers. Maybe now we can talk about maybe like just two key principles that we really should be explaining to our kids or our teenagers and how we can do that. Okay, yes. So let's do the ones that I enjoy most to our kids. So um, I want to start with the one easy, hard, hard, easy. Okay, so it's one of my favorite ones. So the principle states, if we choose easy now, we're going to have hard consequences later. If mm. we choose hard now, we're going to have easier later. This is a principle that God teaches in his word. If you go and read um, Proverbs, he says, those who disregard discipline despise themselves. Okay? But the one who heeds correction guides understanding. That's discipline. Choose hard over easy. Or if we look at Hebrews, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. So we choose hard, the pain now, but later on, okay, later, it yields a harvest of righteousness. So we have easy later. Can you see if you can find that in God's word, the principle? So when we choose, now, how do we know it's a principle? Okay, we can test it, and I challenge the teenagers to go and test it. You know, they need to experience that God's word is alive in our everyday lives. So go and test it. Okay, so I always challenge them to see if it's a principle. Okay, a principle is like gravity, it's always on. It doesn't matter if you're on, uh, on the roof or, like I said, on a tree or in an airplane, it's always on. Okay, that means we can rely on it and make healthy choices. Okay, now the hard, easy, easy, hard principle, we need to be able to apply it in all areas of life, otherwise, it's not a principle. So let's check. Okay, if I choose easy, and eat all the chocolates today because I feel bad. I have heart later, maybe heart disease, or I need to lose the weight, go and jog and all of that. It's much harder to lose weight than staying in shape. If I choose hard and eat my broccoli and have self-control, like Robert said, okay, then it's easier later to stay fit and stay healthy. That is easier, okay? Let's do it in finances. If I choose easy and spend all my money, it's hard later because then I have debt to pay or whatever if I don't have any money. If I choose hard to have a budget, say no to eating out and staying in my budget, okay, then it's easier later and I have money to save for my retirement. Okay, for our kids, for our teenager, it's hard to say no to sex and to the peer pressure of the kids around us. It's hard when everybody has TikTok and your teenager doesn't. 
Okay? And I know that. I've got two teenagers in my house and they don't have TikTok. All right? But the people come and ask me, what, how do you get it so easy with your teenagers? I chose the hard I'm doing hard things. My teenager is doing hard things, okay, to choose for their life in the future, to have easier later, all right? So that's an important principle to teach our kids that we can see it in God's word, all right? So that's the one that I want to share. I've got actually two more. I was thinking about the other one, but uh, maybe we can do, is that all right? Do you have follow-up questions about the hard, easy, easy, hard one? <laughs> Uh, no, but I did want to say, I think an important thing you said that maybe people didn't like missed it was one is you, we're teaching our kids, you know, hard, easy, easy, hard. But I think also it's not just teaching our kids, but ourselves. Like if we choose easy right now as parents, we might be mm -hmm. paying for that later. That's going to be harder. And so I think that principle is good, not just in how we teach our children, but how we think about parenting and how we could encourage each other and say, you know what, right now it is hard to tell your teenager not to be on social media, but it'll pay off later on. And I think that's such a good frame of mind, not just to teach our children, but to teach ourselves as parents. Definitely, I do agree. And you see, a principle can apply in all areas. So if you have young, some of your listeners have younger kids. If you just don't want your kids to yell and scream and throw a tantrum, so you put on the TV or give them the chocolate they're asking for and you give in, that's easy because now they stop crying in the moment. But when you have a 16-year-old and you need to give in to everything later, you're going to have so much heart. Yes. So it's hard to actually work, especially that toddler years. And I sometimes say it's the two the, uh, terrible twos. It's just repeated in the teenage years. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to a, to a toddler just by once in that moment just to stop. It's easy to give them what they want just to stop. But your later is going to be hard. Because the yeah. consequences for a teenager just to say yes to everything, that is hard. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So the principle apply. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you said you had yes. a few more that you wanted to cover. Yeah, for sure. Let's do another one, uh, especially the one about sex, if that's okay. <laughs> when we need to talk to our teenagers about sex, we need to apply, uh, explain to them the principle of harvest, all right? Of actually, you know, Jesus always talks about harvesting and the fields and all of that. So we can go and see how Jesus teaches that, okay? Now, in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for everything, a time for sowing, a time for reaping, all right? And if we apply that principle, all right, with our kids when they are making choices in their life, there is time for everything, all right? So when, we, when they are teenagers, okay, it is not time for having sex at that point in time, although their bodies is feeling like it, all right? So what we want to teach our kids is we don't want to just say, no, 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 you can't do that, you can't do that, and just condemn them. We want to inspire them that when we are sowing in our fields, okay, we will have a harvest later. But the point is we need to wait for that harvest. So you want to dream about your wife and husband one day, so we dream with our kids, okay, then we say, it's not no, it's no for now, but not no forever. Mm. We're not taking our lesson through with our kids, okay? So if we apply that principle of harvesting, okay, the harvest comes later. So you say no, but it's not no forever. So we yeah. set our kids up for failure if we don't understand, teach them delayed gratification. <laughs> and that's a big word in our society today. Because with all the immediate, everything is available, all right, our kids doesn't understand delayed gratification. And it's actually a principle. We need to wait for the seed to sprout. We need to yes. wait for the right time. And it's not when they are teenagers. It's a little bit later. So we need to yes. help them hope for a great future. And it's worth waiting for. But we can't mess around now. So it's no for now, not no forever. <laughs> I love that because I think... Well, one, like you said, it's, you know, teaching them that delayed gratification, but also this idea that the harvesting, it's no for now, but not no forever, but also the idea of like, you reap what you sow. 
So if you're going to be spending your time making bad decisions, then it might not affect you right now, but later it will. And if you sow bad things, you're not going to reap good things. Um, and so I think teaching those principles in a way that they understand and that we're not just saying no to our kids, but we're giving them context. We're giving them background. Maybe we're also giving them not just a biblical story, but just a story so that they can understand. And then they make the choice of what they sow to then what they want to reap later on. Yes. Because ultimately it's their own choice. And the, the word of God says you need to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Okay. Yes. So we need to help teach our kids the biblical principles and they need to work that out with fear and trembling because it's their own way they're going to fear. So, we, and that is the fear where we fear God, godly fear, you know, because he's the creator. It's that fear that he's holy. He knows what he's talking about. That's the respect we have for God, okay? We're not fearing him to come and smite us. <laughs> we are fearing him because he's holy and good. Now, let's talk, can I quickly add to what you said? I said I have another one, and maybe this is one that I would love to add about sowing and reaping for us as parents, okay? Now, okay. We, yeah, whatever we sow into our lives, that's what we, what we will reap eventually. But I want to take that a principle a little bit further or a little bit deeper in the insight for us as parents. And I get this a lot with parents that I work in my office, all right? So the kids are sowing things in their lives, spending obscene amount of money in front of online gaming, all right? Making bad choices and all of that. So they are sowing, okay? And then what do us as parents can do? We can jump in and reap what the kids have sown, okay? Because the principle, let's look at gravity. If, we, uh, if, we are, if I have it in my hand like this, okay, and I let it go, we know it's going to fall to the ground. But I can also catch the pen. I can intervene gravity, okay? So us as parents can come and intervene and take what the kids have sowed and we reap it. Mm. And I think we, that's a, a dis, a, we put our kids at a disadvantage, okay? We need to teach our children the principles of life that if they are late for school, you don't jump in and fix that. Let them suffer the consequences. They need to learn those principles, okay, that they're going to reap. If they are lazy, they're going to lose their jobs, all right? And so they need, and that's the thing that the principle, we tell our kids, oh, they're going to reap the consequences. But how many times do we intervene as parents? Yeah. Yeah, that comes. <laughs> I no, you. I think you like nailed the you know, head on the nail is this idea that if we truly are teaching our kids, you reap what you sow. But then we come in and we take away those consequences. Then they never learn that. And so, is this something you think that parents should practice with their kids from a young age, or is it you know once they hit 10, 12, 11, there's just more consequences that we kind of like allow them to experience. Like what's your suggestion about that? Yeah. So um, we need to teach them as you, so let's think about it. Uh, they are actually learning it from very young when they start learning to walk. When they try and think out, they fall and get some pain. They get up and walk again, fall and get some pain. We can't save them from that pain. Otherwise they'll never walk. Can you see that's a principle? So yeah. we need to teach the age appropriate. So a two-year-old or no, two-year-old, when do they start walking? <laughs> you know, when they start walking, you're already seeing the principle apply. Now let's talk about God's principles. Now in Deuteronomy, it states, it says that love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And these commandments that I give you for today are to be upon, write it on your hearts, okay? And then talk about it to your kids when they're sitting down to eat, when they're going in, when they're going out, whatever they are busy with. You know, it's God's laws. It's God's principles. So we should teach this to them in everyday life, okay? Mm. Let them experience God's principles. And I, I'm shocked that people disregard that God is for everything in life. When our yeah. kids are listening to music, when they are watching TV, when they, whatever they are busy with, we can teach God's principles in everyday life. And we can always have a Bible, a part of the Bible that we can bring into our teaching 
And sometimes we just can say, yes, that's consequences. We need to face our consequences. That, uh, but I think we can teach it in all areas of our life. And we should, because God says we should teach it to them in all, all aspects of their lives. Yeah. And I think that's a good reminder. And I just want to repeat the two things that you said. I think that stand out is one, you know, start this as young as they are and in every kind of moment, but also mm. at an age appropriate level. Because I think sometimes I'll try to explain to them a concept, but it's like they're not old enough to fully understand that. So being able to simplify biblical principles to teach the young ones um, and then walk with them as they're learning it. So I think that's so key. Yes, and uh, I remember Jesus took it as the people that followed him in parables because he said they didn't understand their heavenly insight. So that's why he taught it that way. Now, uh, uh, maybe can I give you a quick example how I taught my son and daughter uh, some principles as well uh, about yeah. God. And uh, they were young and my son, uh, he's the older one. So he can do, a, you know, boys play and all of that. And he would maybe bump his sister or maybe rough play too much because he gets excited. You know how five, six year olds get, okay? And he, um, so one day they were getting really dangerous uh, on a trampoline and he can fall off and hit a head or break a leg or something, all right? And I, I stopped him and I explained to him, listen, you can say sorry, okay? And she will forgive you, all right? So God, God's grace is undeniable. He will forgive us from our sins, all right? But the consequences of our sin, if her leg is broken, it's broken. Yeah. Okay. So that stays there. Can you see, you can see it say, God will forgive you. Consequences here on earth is still there. I think sometimes our kids and we as adults even think, even if we go to Christ and ask for forgiveness, everything is fixed. No, it's not. Okay. God's grace, our eternal eternity is fixed. But the consequences on earth is still here. <laughs> if you have Outside of marriage, like the unplanned pregnancy, and I and once I met a, a girl to Christ uh, as she was sitting there. We spent some time together, and she asked for forgiveness. And I believe she's washed whiter than snow, and God's grace protects her. Okay, for eternity to be with God, and I know she's going to be there with me. But the baby is still there. The yeah. baby is still there. All right, can you see how we can still teach this? To a 13, 20 year old, 18 year old, that the baby will still be here. Can we see how we can say it's, uh, the same principle to uh, early as five when they hit or scratch or hurt each other? The pain on the flesh is still there. Totally. And I think we could probably talk about this all day because there's just so many good, amazing biblical principles and things that we can help our kids understand. But I really appreciate the principles that you've shared with us today. Um, but before we go, if people want to kind of connect with you and get to know you more, how can they find you online? Uh, they can go to my website, www.litsexplain.org. Or I'm on Facebook as well, Natasha, let's explain. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm not active on Facebook. My website, uh, all my details is there. Uh, I do teach parents biblical principles and how to teach them this when it comes specifically to sex <laughs> and making their hard choices and uh, having positive impressions on our kids when it comes to sex. Because we need to realize, okay, they are out there in the world every day. Yeah. If you have one boring explanation to the children saying, don't do that, you are fighting against hundreds of millions of messages out there. And I yeah. love what Bob, uh, uh, Rob Parsland said. He said, in, uh, when we were young, you were saying just when we were young, <laughs> all right, if we imagine we were down a corridor of doors, and on one door it says uh, unplanned pregnancy, teen pregnancy, STDs, um, drugs whatever okay that doors would be closed and you would hear about somebody doing it in far distance but you were never confronted i remember in school i never saw the girl that got pregnant i don't even know who she was okay but today in today's society that door that corridor all the doors are open and the kids are having fun playing inside and say what's the problem why are you standing in the hall why are you not enjoying it? What's wrong with you? The yeah. world has changed for our kids. And yes. we need to step 
as Christians, we can't just tell them no, don't have sex, just because God said so. They need an answer to their why. They need an question, and they are supposed to ask questions. God's word and God created these answers to all our questions. Let's go and investigate that together with our kids. And yeah. it's a fun journey. Yeah, no, it is. And I, yeah, I really appreciate what you shared. And I'll make sure to add those links so people can get to know more about those principles through you in the show notes. Um, thank you for joining me today and just having this conversation. I know just a few principles that you covered can help quite a few parents. And so if any of you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments and uh, we'll try to answer them. But just this encouragement to, you know, teach our children these principles in ways that they connect to. And I love what you said. We have to give them a big enough why. Otherwise, they 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 don't know why. And somebody else will give it to them. And it, chances are it's not going to be biblical. Um, so that's why we need to be proactive about it and just be engaged with our kids. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. say better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.